Now, to ease communication in Masindi's Mount Lingo society, Kiswahili is the major language spoken alongside Runyoro. Some of these communities include the Acholi and Langi from neighboring northern Uganda, as well as the Alugbar and Alur from West Nile. Masindi also boasts of the rich historical roots traced to the great Runyoro Kitara kingdom that covered as far as present the Democratic Republic of Congo. Masindi is located in midwestern Uganda and is part of the larger Bunyoro sub region. When you enter the district from any part, you are welcomed by a stretch of farmland interspersed with ranches and tree plantations. A drive through the town shows that the colonial arrangement of the buildings and their types have not changed much over 60 years since they were constructed. For instance, this stadium was originally called King George VI Stadium. And in about 500 meters from Kabalegeses stands this monument, which indicates a historical moment when the late King of Bunyoro Kitara Kingdom, Chua Kabalega, met Sir Samuel Baker for reconciliation. A number of historical monuments here tell the story of what the great Bunyoro Kitara Kingdom looked like in its heydays. The district is a favorite stopover for tourists going to the nearby Machizon Falls, previously known as Kabalega National Park. In the education sector, one cannot miss the famous schools such as Masindi Public Primary School and Kabalega Secondary School, which have produced many high-profile Ugandans. Although there was no railway line to the district, this now dilapidated service station was constructed to support the then flourishing trade with Zaire, now Democratic Republic of Congo. The trucks used to come here and then move to Butiava, where they would collect cotton. That cotton would be ferried up to Masindi Port. Then from Masindi Port across to Namasagari, then onto the trains. Economically, Masindi's backbone is agriculture and cattle keeping. And uh, this financial year alone, we, ha we budgeted for 1.1 billion that uh, we are injecting into our people for food security. And uh, last year alone, we were able to fund uh, 2,702 farmers to a tune of 600 million. The district chairperson is one of the successful farmers who earns a living through farming. He boasts of a steady income from coffee, pigare, poultry and matoke plantations. Farming has not only improved his household income, but also the diet of his family. There's no any other thing. Whether I'm eating dodo, must put eggs, beans, I put eggs, whether what, we put eggs. So eggs is uh, our daily menu. Many machine residents are also employed in sugarcane plantations, with the major employer here being Kinyara Sugar Works. However, despite these activities and a huge potential for growth, the district is grappling with a poor road network due to centralization of the service by the Works Ministry. There is nothing we are seeing being done on all trunk roads in the district. The road going to Butiava, the contractor was identified, powered maram and left those hips four months now. Since I entered the office, I found them. Like many other districts, Masindi is still struggling to improve its revenue base after graduated tax was scrapped. For now, it depends on grants from the central government, locally raised revenue from Kinyara Sugar Works, and markets. Masindi that gave birth to Lisa and Kirianongo districts has a promising future. What with the ongoing oil exploration in Ulisa and the upcoming Karuma Dam Power Project, Kinyara Sugar Works is also on an expansion drive and it's hoped more people will be employed in the company. Clearly, therefore, there is a lot of potential in Masindi, but most especially, it's hoped that when oil production begins, probably in a year from now, things will look brighter. Hilara Isiga for NTV Connect.